Lordy, how people hate starlings. For running other birds away from their feeders, for one thing. And mockingbirds do that too, but they don't come in hordes. And besides, a mockingbird will sing you a medley of tunes. Whereas the starling squawks will make a blue jay sound genteel. Annoyed by these hooligans, lots of people simply avoid putting out food that starlings want. And that's understandable. But consider this. That food, whatever it is, sits waiting for takers most of the time, even in cold weather. The problem isn't so much that starlings keep other birds away. The other birds manage to find plenty of opportunities to feed. No, what we really resent is how much of the food that we provide the starlings manage to hoover up. Bark butter on tree trunks, for example. It's a popular winter food that attracts everything but the finches, even cute little brown creepers. But starlings will arrive like a gang of uninvited teenage boys raiding your fridge. And you'll find yourself complaining, hey, where did all that bark butter go? So maybe you don't buy any more of that kind of food. Or then you decide not to replace cylinder feeders with dried mealworms in them. But where do you stop in your quest to be rid of these pests? Before you decide to starve the starlings off your property, think about a couple of the consequences. The first is that you won't get woodpeckers anymore, and that'd be a shame. As a halfway measure to getting rid of the starlings, you could hang a suet feeder with the suet on the underside. It's true that starlings will feed there some of the time, but not that much. At least, it won't remind you of the way your peanut feeder got ransacked. To get to the food in these feeders, starlings have to helicopter up, and they often fail to get a sure grip, so they don't stay long enough to gorge themselves. Woodpeckers, on the other hand, feel right at home on those feeders, grabbing the wood with their claws, effortlessly hopping down the side and rolling onto their backs, ready to tuck in for a contented meal. Starlings are doing good just to keep their balance on the slanted roof, much less shimmy down the sides. No, the only way to the basement from the roof is to fly. Not that they're unwilling to fly to get the food, but it is more work for them than for the woodpeckers. And besides, they can only feed there one at a time. The other consequence of starving the starlings off your property is that you'll miss out on so much fun. Starlings will provide you with more acrobatic action than any other group of birds coming to your feeders. Forget car chase movies, cars never get off the ground. These aerial gymnasts ricochet off each other, spurting in all directions like pool balls. The Latin name for these quarrelsome, screechy gluttons is Sternus vulgaris. Perfect. And yet, despite their vulgarity, they're actually handsome birds, in a Darth Vader sort of way. Thank you.